What do you got, man? Yeah, it's right here. What? Oh, holy Just minutes ago, an explorer was taken by Bigfoot, he made me do the unthinkable. In the endless expanse of the Pacific Ocean, there are over 30,000 islands where unknown creatures could easily hide. For Ella, this wasn't a mere thought, it became her terrifying reality. What would you do if you were kidnapped by Sasquatch? As we explore Ella's story, it becomes clear that her ordeal is more harrowing than one might expect, and what follows is sure to astound you. Waves of determination as a young girl, Ella had always dreamed of sailing around the world alone. People doubted her, which only made her more determined to prove them wrong. Her father, an experienced sailor, taught her everything she needed to know and instilled in her the courage to pursue her dream. By the time she was 23, she felt ready to embark on her great voyage. The journey could fill an entire book, but there was one chapter that stood out above all others. Little did Ella know, her voyage would soon turn into a chilling encounter that would change her life forever. After sailing northeast from the Cook Islands for three days straight, Ella found herself near a small, secluded island. The inhabitants were friendly, offering her food and plenty of advice. On her last evening there, as she sat down for a meal at the only restaurant in the village, the mood shifted when she mentioned her next destination. Everyone in the room urged her to avoid an island that lay along her planned route, insisting that even keeping a distance of ten miles wouldn't be safe. Ella's curiosity got the best of her, and she asked what made this island so dangerous. At first, she assumed it might be due to rough seas or some kind of natural hazard. But then, an older man spoke up, revealing that the danger didn't come from the island itself but from its inhabitants. He described them as a strange mix of human and beast, neither fully one nor the other. The locals called the place Ape Island and claimed it was notorious for the grim fate that awaited any sailor who ventured too close. Tales of sailors' skulls mounted on stakes as warnings lined the shore. It all seemed too far-fetched like a story meant to scare away tourists. Ella couldn't help but feel skeptical. But the strangest part was yet to come. Despite their heartfelt warnings, Ella left the next morning. The sea was eerily calm, with not a breath of wind to push her boat forward. For hours, she sat there, motionless under the blazing sun. The fishermen's stories kept playing over and over in her mind. The island they warned her about was only ten miles away, and her curiosity began to grow. She started to consider changing her course, just to see if there was any truth to the tales, when suddenly, a storm appeared on the horizon. It came out of nowhere, moving with alarming speed. With no chance to escape, she had to secure everything on board and brace herself for what was coming. The storm raged on, battering her boat with powerful waves. She couldn't steer, couldn't find a moment's rest. After hours of struggling against the wind and waves, she finally decided to anchor and take a short break in her cabin. Exhausted, Ella drifted into a deep sleep. When she woke up, the storm had passed, leaving a calm and quiet sea under the light of the moon. She stepped onto the deck, trying to make sense of the sudden shift in weather. That's when she saw it, a dark landmass in the distance, much closer than she expected. But this wasn't the end of her ordeal. The storm had pushed her toward the very island she had been warned to avoid. Now, it was less than a quarter mile away. It seemed like a cruel joke, but the winds were coming from the west and there was no sign of the village she had seen earlier, no flickering lights along the coast. What caught her eye was a faint wisp of smoke that seemed to disappear as quickly as it had appeared as if someone had just put out a fire. In the dim moonlight, Ella couldn't be sure what she had seen. As she tried to gather her thoughts and figure out where she was, a chilling revelation washed over her. The shape of the land in front of her was none other than Ape Island, the very place she had been warned about the night before. Somehow, it had ended up right in front of her, and the island lay there in eerie silence, almost as if it were waiting for her. Despite all the scary stories she had heard, 
Ella's curiosity began to overcome her fear. She decided to remain anchored off the coast for the night. Ella thought that if she had been wise, she would have left right then, leaving the island and all the dark stories about it behind. But instead, she decided to retreat to the cabin, trying to calm herself with a glass of wine and some crocheting. But that wasn't the worst part. About half an hour later, as she was deep in thought, a sudden jolt shook the boat. It felt like something was pulling it down from below. Startled, she watched as her wine glass slid off the table and shattered on the floor. The boat tilted so sharply that she almost fell off her seat. Just when she thought the boat might capsize, the pull stopped and the boat rocked back to a stable position. With her heart pounding, Ella ran outside to see what was happening. It seemed like the anchor had caught on something underwater, causing the boat to tilt so dramatically. The sea around her was calm, which only made the sudden movement more disconcerting. But then, before she could figure it out, the boat was pulled again, even harder this time. The chain tightened and the boat tilted dangerously to one side. She stumbled and nearly fell overboard as the boat's balance was thrown off balance once again. But this was not all. Realizing that this was no ordinary event, Ella felt a surge of fear. Whatever was beneath the water was strong and seemed determined to draw her closer to it. She thought of the gun she kept in the cockpit, but it was too late to grab it. The boat continued to tilt and water began to flood the deck. She clung to the railing, trying to stay upright. At that moment, a large, dark hand emerged from the water, its fingers gripping the edge of the boat. It was joined by a creature that looked like a mix of ape and human, with skin that glistened in the moonlight. Its eyes were dark and empty, staring at her with a gaze that sent shivers down her spine. The creature's head was cone-shaped, its body bulky, and it had almost no neck. It moved in a strange, undulating way as it tried to climb further into the boat. As the creature climbed aboard, its weight flipped the boat over completely. Within seconds, the boat capsized, throwing Ella and the creature into the cold, dark water. She found herself submerged, confused and terrified, with no idea where the creature had gone. But this wasn't the final twist. Underwater, all was silent, but Ella could sense movement around her, suggesting the creature was still nearby. She swam blindly, unsure if she was moving away or heading deeper into danger. After what seemed like an eternity, she knew she needed to breathe. She surfaced slowly, trying not to make a sound, but just as she took a breath, something grabbed her ankle with incredible force. Water filled her lungs as she was pulled down again, and in that moment of pure fear, she passed out. When she woke up, she heard the sound of waves crashing nearby. She was lying on the shore, feeling dazed and completely exhausted. For a moment, she didn't dare open her eyes, hoping she had somehow escaped. But when she finally looked around, she saw the same terrifying face that had haunted her on the boat. The creature was there, staring at her with its dark, menacing eyes, and it seemed clear that this nightmare was far from over. As the storm cleared, Ella saw Ape Island up close, not realizing her biggest challenges were still ahead. Silent forest gathering as the creature on the deck kept staring at Ella without blinking, its expression was downright unsettling. After what felt like forever, the creature looked over its shoulder and raised its arm, making a gesture. In response, more of its kind slowly began to appear from the trees, moving down to the shore where Ella lay. They gathered around her silently, their eyes fixed on her, and their presence alone sent a chill down her spine. The quiet was finally broken by a rattling noise that grew louder with every second. As the sound drew closer, the group parted, allowing a figure to step forward. This creature was different. It wore a suit made of bones, like armor, decorated with beads and other objects that glinted in the moonlight. As it stood over Ella, blocking the light of the moon, it motioned for her to stand up. She did so, though her legs trembled beneath her but this wasn't the worst part. Several of the creatures raised their spears, pointing them directly at Ella, making it clear she had no choice but to follow. The leader in the bone armor turned and began to walk away, expecting her to follow closely. 
With the sharp points of the spears behind her, Ella was forced to go along. It felt like they were marching her toward a terrible fate. The stories of severed heads and village warnings seemed all too real now, especially when she noticed the human bones woven into the leader's outfit. They led her away from the beach and deeper into the jungle. The path, dimly lit by torches, wound through the thick trees until they reached a large hut with a roof made of palm leaves. In the center of this hut was a stone table that looked very much like an altar. With no way to run and surrounded by these towering figures holding weapons, Ella felt a surge of regret for not listening to the villagers' warnings. As she stood there, near the stone table, thinking this might be the end, another figure appeared from behind a curtain. This one carried a large stone blade. The leader of the tribe sat on a simple throne, watching. Two of the creatures grabbed Ella by the arms and pushed her down against the cold stone surface, her head pressed against it. But the worst was yet to come. The one with the blade lifted it high above his head, ready to strike. Ella closed her eyes, bracing for the end. But then, instead of feeling pain, she heard a loud crack. Startled, she realized she was still alive. The sound had come from a coconut that was now split open beside her head. To her shock, the executioner handed her the coconut with a grin, and the whole tribe burst into laughter. Still confused and in shock, Ella took the coconut. The leader, still wearing his bone armor, waved for her to come closer and sit next to him. A younger tribe member, who seemed to know some English, spoke slowly, translating the leader's words. The leader, with a dramatic gesture, showed a human skull, tossing it aside as if it were nothing. He explained that they had different plans for Ella. At that moment, Ella's pistol was placed on the table in front of her. It was the very same one she had kept on her boat. The leader pointed at the gun and signaled that he wanted to learn about it. Realizing that this was a much better situation than she had feared, Ella agreed to teach them. The tribe responded with cheers and laughter, celebrating her decision. The next morning, the leader quieted the group and then waved them away. One of the female members of the tribe took Ella down a path to a small hut. This hut was surprisingly well-equipped, better than the others she had seen. After making sure Ella was comfortable, the woman smiled and, in heavily accented English, wished her sweet dreams before leaving. But this wasn't the end of the story. Left alone, Ella started thinking about how these creatures knew English. Had they met humans before, maybe even worked with them? Whatever the answer, she knew she needed to find a way off the island. Despite this brief moment of peace, she couldn't imagine spending her life here. Ella decided to stay alert for any opportunity to escape, not knowing what the next days would bring. She sat in the hut, listening to the sounds of the jungle outside. She knew that the tribe's interest in her gun might buy her some time, but she had to be ready. The night was quiet, but her mind was racing, filled with thoughts of how she could get back to her boat, or if her boat was even still afloat. She hoped that by playing along for now, she might find a chance to slip away. With her new role, Ella wondered if she could change the tribe or if she should escape before it's too late. Sunlit shadow dance after thinking over all the possible ways out, Ella eventually drifted off to sleep, the distant sounds of the ocean helping to calm her restless mind. She wasn't sure how long she had slept, but she woke up to sunlight streaming through the small window of the hut, casting shadows of palm leaves dancing against the bamboo walls. Not long after she got up, there was a knock on the door. Unsure of what to do in such an unusual situation, Ella hesitated but the visitor didn't wait. It was the female creature she had met before. She stepped inside, looked at Ella with respect, kneeled, and simply said, breakfast, while holding a basket filled with strange-looking fruits that Ella didn't recognize. Ella thanked her but felt too nervous to eat much as the woman began tidying up the room. It seemed she had been assigned as a caretaker, much like a housekeeper in a hotel, to make sure Ella was comfortable. The woman introduced herself as Alana and told Ella to ask if she needed anything. Ella shared her full name, Eleanor, but mentioned she liked to be called Ella. Alana noted how similar their names were and laughed happily.
but this wasn't the only surprise. As they talked, Elana kept watching Ella closely, her eyes narrowing as if she was figuring something out. Suddenly, Elana said, I know who you are. Confused, Ella asked what she meant. Elana continued, Prophecy. You are the woman of God, destroyer of our enemy. She then quickly added that Ella should keep this quiet for now. The idea of being part of some prophecy seemed almost ridiculous to Ella, who was left feeling even more confused by what Elana had said. Before Ella could ask any more questions, Elana urged her to come along to meet the chieftain, Anela, at his hut, saying it was important. Feeling a mix of curiosity and worry, Ella followed Alana outside. To her surprise, there was a platform that hadn't been there the night before. In an unexpected show of strength, Alana lifted the platform with Ella on it and carried it overhead as they moved down the trail. But this wasn't the worst part. As they traveled, they took a right turn at a fork in the path, passing through areas that looked like the beginnings of a simple village, small huts and clearings appeared here and there. The path ended at a large area surrounded by a wall of sharpened sticks, with a structure on a small hill at its center, guarded by strong, fierce-looking creatures. The guards let them in and called up the hill, signaling their arrival to the others. The chieftain, dressed in bone armor, came out and walked up to Ella, holding her gun in his hand. He knelt down, offered the gun back to her, and then led her to a simple shooting range set up behind his large hut. Pointing at a target, he simply said, show. Ella aimed the gun and fired. The shot was a little off, but to the creatures, it seemed like magic. They cheered loudly and encouraged her to try again. Her second shot was better, and their excitement grew even more. But things soon took a turn. One of the warriors stepped forward and asked for the gun. Reluctantly, Ella handed it over, but watched nervously as the creature pointed the barrel at himself. Quickly, she corrected him, and he took a shot, laughing loudly. However, the situation soon got out of hand when he started pointing the gun at the others, causing panic. The warrior fired several times until the gun was empty, then looked confused as to why it wouldn't work anymore. But this was far from the end. The chieftain stepped in, striking the careless warrior with a large stick and taking the gun back. He returned it to Ella, clearly puzzled and a bit angry. After a brief attempt to explain the need for more ammunition, which the chieftain didn't seem to understand, the mood in the group changed sharply. The chieftain, feeling tricked by Ella's inability to provide more bullets, declared that she would now face the same fate they had planned for their enemies. Ella was escorted back toward the stone altar. The executioner raised his weapon, ready to strike. But just as it seemed all hope was lost, Elana suddenly stepped forward, shouting a command that stopped everything. She argued passionately, holding up a piece of bark that seemed to have some kind of writing on it. She explained that according to a prophecy, Ella was a woman of God, meant to look like one of their own, sent to help them defeat their enemies. The prophecy warned that if they failed to recognize Ella as a friend, it would bring disaster upon the tribe, but if they accepted her, they would achieve great victory. But this wasn't the final twist. The tribe was quiet, listening carefully. The chieftain looked unsure, his eyes moving between Elana and Ella, trying to decide what to believe. Elana spoke again, louder this time, saying that the signs were clear, and they should welcome Ella, not harm her. The tension was thick in the air as everyone waited for the chieftain's decision. After a long pause, the chieftain slowly nodded and lowered his head in agreement. He then stepped forward and declared that Ella would be treated as a guest, not an enemy. The crowd erupted in cheers, and Ella felt a wave of relief wash over her. The next day, Ella was taken to a small hut, better equipped than the one she had stayed in before. A young tribe member who spoke some English told her that she was free to move around the village but warned her to stay away from certain areas. Ella nodded, but her mind was already racing with plans. She knew she had to find a way to leave this island. Even though she was safe for now, she didn't trust how long this peace would last. She decided to play along for the time being, hoping for a chance to escape. 
Ella watched the tribe carefully, learning their routines and habits. Every moment was spent looking for an opportunity to make her way back to her boat or find another way off the island. She knew it wouldn't be easy, but she was determined to get back to her world, no matter what it took. And so, as the days went by, Ella stayed alert, ready for whatever came next. Would she find a way off Ape Island? Or would she have to continue playing the role they expected of her, hoping for a moment to break free? Only time would tell, but she was prepared for anything. As Ella navigates her uncertain future, should she attempt to escape or embrace her prophesied role? Like, comment your thoughts, and subscribe for more captivating stories.